it's literally like a toolbox with an instruction manual that you can use from front to back or you can reach into as you need it. So, you know, that's why I love things like this frameworks. And, and for those wondering, like all the best things in the world, like relationships, people use the Imago dialogue, how to effectively communicate to find the middle ground and eliminate emotion like Brian Bogart, who is a dear friend and coming to speak at the event again is going to talk about our emotional triggers and where it shows up and like how to use those so yeah. we can effectively communicate, not communicate from shame or anger or rage. And so I think it's, I think it's absolutely huge. And so, um, you know, you have a background in copywriting and marketing, but you went super high level to like, this is for every leader entrepreneur because anybody, and you said this, anybody who practices effective communication, a byproduct is they become a leader. They become impactful because they know how to communicate. Uh, but I want to yeah. go the other way on this one because this is going to resonate with me. It might sting a little bit. What are the biggest mistakes that you see people making when it comes to communication? Like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, the, the, the biggest mistake is that people start off their communication with assumptions about what the other piece and person knows and, and believes. And so when we, uh, when we start out that way, we, we're communicating from a premise of like, oh, they should know this or they already know this or they understand what I want. And if we just eliminated that, and use, you know, these simple tools and processes that, like I said, you can learn in, you know, 30 seconds and practice the same day and, you know, and implement when you, when you put things like this in place, then you strip away the assumptions that kill communication. Um, that that's probably the biggest thing. And I keep learning, I mean, I've been practicing stuff for quite a few years and I keep learning it every day, every week still, um, to, to not assume. And then the other thing I would say is that people routinely just brute force other people's brains with too much information without, you know, anchoring into one thing without explaining, here's why I'm going to go on for the next 10 minutes about something. Um, and that that's the other thing that those are the two biggest things that cause not only like frustration, stress issues, probably fear in, in your team some of the time too, but there's a significant dollar impact when you don't communicate effectively. Things are late, the wrong things are built. It takes four meetings instead of a 15 minute, you know, four hours instead of a 15 minute conversation. Like the time impact and the dollar impact is just gross when you don't <laughs> don't have a simple, you know, communication tool set and framework to use. Yeah, no, I can I can see that. So biggest mistake number one would be making assumptions. And we all know that quote, but it's it's so true. You know, we, yeah. we apply that everywhere. Customer journey, marketing, team leadership. Like if you don't say it, they can't do it. Like nobody yeah. knows, none. And I, yeah. I don't believe any ambiguity is beneficial or positive when it comes to effective communication or anything in business marketing. And then brute force, yeah. which uh, that one, it's a lesson. I'm still, I'm still learning. Um, yep. I, yeah. I tend to be and a fire hose. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I, I think. The way that you can tell, like if you, it's good to start to be aware of when you experience like that brute force of information. And it's, it's usually if you come out of a meeting, you know, or an interaction with somebody or a long text chat and you feel drained and overwhelmed and like stressed out and like you're, you don't want to jump back into that same conversation. That's a great indication that the person just buried you in context or didn't, you know, didn't have any strategy for what they wanted to share with you. And well, yes, there are times in our life where that's an appropriate therapeutic thing to give a friend or a family member or a loved one. That's not effective communication if you're trying to get somewhere or get results. It's and unless you're, it, therapy is great. Like we should just all <laughs> talk about whatever we want, and we do provide therapy to people around us, and and that's fine sometimes. But when you want to get somewhere, you need to be clear about where you want to go. And one another um, tool that I'll share that I talk about a little in the book in the book about, as well is if I don't understand what my team members is saying or what they want, I'll say, okay, well, what problem are you trying to solve? And so then they'll say the problem I'm trying to solve is, and they'll explain like, oh, cool. Like, we'll go talk to this person. They have it, or here's the answer. Or, I have that tool. Um, and just learning to, to communicate in that way just makes things work a lot better. And with the bigger the team's gotten here, the more I've had to make sure that these are repeatable, scalable tools, not just something that I, assumed in my head right so <laughs> <laughs> full circle with Gabe on this one full circle yeah I think you know like uh, it took me a long time to realize that my communication is only effective if the person on the other end can receive it and yeah 
you know, that, that being a big one, I'd say like, I have to add a mistake that I have been working on for years, you know, assumptions being one brute forcing number two, but I think space is the secret weapon for communication to be effective space. Yeah. Like I know it took me probably 10 years to be comfortable in silence. Right. And not like fill space or try to fill space or not give them their space. Yeah. And it's still depending on who it's with or the context still to this day, makes my skin turn. And I'm like overly confident in the most awkward conversations and situations. <laughs> but I'd say that that's probably one of the biggest mistakes I see is people don't leave space. Right. There's no space for it to land, yeah. for it to marinate, for it to react or space for the person to lean in, give you tells, communicate back. And I know that was a big one for me. So that's, that's one I'll add to the pile of like, don't make that mistake. Pausing is powerful, like powerful when it comes to communication. So, and I love that, by the way, you said that tool with your team is like, if you're unclear with somebody, what they want or what they're doing, the, the, I don't want to say the assumption, but most of the time they're probably trying to solve something. And so you say, yeah. Uh, what problem are you trying to solve? Yeah, because if they that. don't know, then and like I don't, it's never it's never a negative thing. But if they don't know, then they shouldn't bring it up yet, and that's okay. And they should work it out or think it through. And if they know, then they didn't frame up a question where I can solve it. And like yeah. I just want to go go do this, go do this, go do this for the time. Like every daily huddle we have, like I'm happy to help the team, and I want to help them all within ten minutes, which I do. Um, not me alone, but like, if there's questions, there's probably four or five questions for me. And if I don't know what they're asking me, then I have no idea what to do. And it just extends the conversation yeah. and it's expensive for everybody. And it's frustrating. So, um, you know, me or one of the other leaders on the team will say, Hey, George, what problem are you trying to solve? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> like, totally. And, and, then, and then it just, it dials it right in. And then they'll sometimes they'll say, Oh, I just want to give you a status. I'm like, cool. I don't need to do anything. But if, again, like if you don't, frame it in, I was just into gonna, that you know you're, i was you gonna know, give everybody an example so like ooh, this is this will probably be the last note that we hit but framing um you know basically when somebody comes with a lack of clarity and you ask that question what problem are you trying to solve it puts them into a frame right because the yep. frame then becomes oh problem solving and they're either like oh i have this problem or they're like, I just need to give you an update. But then they tell you the frame is I need to give you an update. So one of the things that we do, I do it with my wife. I do it with my team. Um, like I'll call my CEO and I'm like, listen, I don't need you to do anything. I just need to dump. Are you okay if I dump? And he's like, yeah. yeah. And I just start like diarrheaing of the mouth and emotions <laughs> and fear. And then I'm like, I have clarity at the end. Or I'll be like, hey, man, I need to dump, but I could use some advice when I'm done. And so we always try to frame that up. And like my wife and I had a really deep conversation yesterday because she's had an amazing week. I've had a pretty tough one. And she immediately was just in her power. Like, what do you saw? I'm like, hey, baby, like, I love you. I don't need you to talk. Like, can you just can I just like dump for a minute and like get it all out? And she just listened for like 10 minutes. And then we got off the phone. I texted her 10 minutes later. I'm like. I am so sorry for all that verbal diarrhea. Like I am so good now and so clear, <laughs> but the frame yeah. is what makes a massive, massive difference. And I, I would call it the intentionality of the conversation. And so making yep. sure that we're not having like unintentional or the worst part. And, and my wife and I work on this a lot, not enrolling each other in each other's lack of clarity or what's coming up. And I'd say it's probably 90% me, 10% her, um, but <laughs> allowing yeah. ourselves the space to be in it and then asking for help when we need it, but always finding that way to frame it and be crystal 